It was. No, I'm going upstairs to join my son. Oh, carry on. But, um, it's supposed, I think it's supposed to only pop up when you actually speak. 25. 25. Three, two, one. one. It's half past two. Isn't that amazing? It is. And how is everybody? We're all very well, thank you. Uh, how are how, you? I'm looking, look at how's Khan. That's lovely. There's Khan. That's fantastic. Oh, and hi, we're Con. all here. Hey, Khan. So we should be just about ready to go. Are we ready to go? Are we yes. ready to go? Yes. 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 Okay. Here we go. Here we go. A long time ago, when the earth was green, there was more kinds of animals than you'd ever seen. They'd run around free while the earth was being born. But the loveliest of them all was the unicorn. There was green alligators and long neck geese, some humpty back camels and some chimpanzees, some cats and rats and elephants, but sure as you're born. So uh, anyway, Con, you go on and start telling us what are we going to do today and tell us what you got up to this week, please, while I get everything ready. Well, uh, we're going to talk about what, what we got up to this week. Uh, I didn't get up to much, really, because it was been snowed in all week. And uh, I've been looking at the walls, uh, talking to the walls. Hello, wall. <laughs> <laughs> I never, never got an answer back. <laughs> uh, and then we've got some, Dex's going to show some of the old videos that we had, we played before. August August 2015, he's going to show. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that, uh, whatever it is. It, 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 I'm sure it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting for me anyway. <clears throat> and um, then we're talking after COVID, after this COVID. Well, what did I get up to this week? Well, I've been working very hard on the next epic, as we call them. Try a little kindness, which John Leyland asked us to uh, re-record and to uh, do a video of and all that. And I was up until three o'clock this morning playing guitar. And that was especially for you, John. I, I hope you're pleased with that, are you? Yeah, I can't wait. Oh, you can't wait. That's okay. That's all I wanted you to say, John. No, you can shut up. You can mute yourself. <laughs> well, what did I do um, apart from that? Well, nothing really. Um, went out for a few walks, which is always advisable. That's really good. Went out for a few walks and had a bit of fun. Shopping. Uh, my Sandy shouted at me. Asda, we went to Asda, we went to Asda shopping. My wife Sandy is shouting at me. That's right. And we had a lovely time. And I said, what I do, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I, when Sandy does the shopping, because they've got a big sign up now, I don't know whether you've noticed it, saying, please shop solo. Um, makes a lot of sense that, I think, because two people together, you get in the way and all that, and people bump into each other inadvertently. But uh, when Sandy does the shopping, I walk up and down the aisles, up, down, up, down, up, down. Usually I can do it about twice. And that, I reckon, is probably about two miles. So anybody who feels like a bit of exercise, Alan, you, Alan, look at Alan. He's nodding away. Alan, unmute yourself there and tell me, do you walk up and down the aisles? Do you? Mm -hmm. Uh, no, I'm a little bit more focused than that. I go, on. I go and get it. And so, so I spend as little as time as possible in the supermarket, trying to keep up out of people's way. Well, that, that is exactly that is exactly where I caught COVID, uh, which is amazing. And uh, my uh, Layla's daddy in Dubai, Dubai, they reckon is about the safest place in the world, and he's now caught it. Uh. And his wife, uh, we think, has got it as well. So Layla, my granddaughter, was supposed to go over there yesterday, all set to go on the flight with Emirates and all that. And you have to have a... Emirates do what they're doing now for the UK. You have to have a test certificate done 
minimum of uh, 48 hours before you get on an Emirates plane. Isn't that amazing? So, Khan. Yes, yes. You say I, something. I, I, I'm just, I'm just doing that. So you say something. You just sit there looking at me. I know. It's enjoying it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have. I don't think I've been outside the door at all because Carol went outside the other day to get some milk off the off the doorstep, and she slid all the way down. <laughs> this is um, going back to August 15th when things were normal and uh, it was sane. It was a bit sane. The Engels Mills, Coral Leisure. That's a big, big venue. Quite a big venue. Wonder will this be our gig of the month? It's con tuning. Gig of the month? I'm playing a little Chinese tune. It's called oh, tuning. Tuning. Oh, tuning. You've heard it before. Yeah. The old gags are the best. Yeah. We're always going on about. Well, we're not always going on about dressing rooms, but. This is the dressing room they expect us to dress in. We're not going to. We've gone off to get us a better dressing room. But look at this. A dingy little hole. See, can I put some lights on? Some lights on? No, I don't think the lights even work. It's full of, well, it's full of everything. Blankets, towels, boxes. You can't see them. But trust me, I'm in the dressing room now. The lights don't work. It's full of suitcases, everything, boxes. I can't believe this. Can't believe it. Well, there we are. They've gone off to, off to get us a better dressing room. I've definitely taken a, a shot of this. The girl singer who's on with us. You're on, you're on the net now out with this. The girl singer has pulled the usual stroke, twiddling your eyelashes. Will there be any chance you could help me in with the gear, lads? They're our crew. We pay them. We pay them. That's nice. Isn't, isn't that terrible? That is terrible. Well, I'm going to deduct money off their money tonight. <laughs> you know, we're always saying what nice dressing rooms we have, and um, then occasionally there's one which is not fit for an act or an artist such as us. I think this is the place, Colin, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, this I've always a wanted a dressing room like this. <laughs> Especially with a, a thing of hanging off the wall down there. Yeah, and this, the, we've, we've actually refused to dress in the other. Yeah. <laughs> that's lovely. <laughs> but we've actually refused to dress in the dress, dressing room that they gave us because it was full of, it's simply full of rubbish. I showed you that earlier on. Mm. And now we're in some sort of a storage room and it's got yeah. all this storage, all the look plates and all Wonderful, stuff. wonderful. <laughs> so if you want, <laughs> I, I tell you the one good thing we have a mirror. We have a mirror. We have a mirror. Hey. That's it. Yeah. Hey. Okay. <laughs> so the model of the story really is that if you come into show business, you have to demand good dressing rooms, and I would say that to any artist in show business watching this, always demand good dressing rooms. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't win, like we didn't win tonight. Mostly we do. But well, at least it's better than the room we had. Yeah. yeah. But this is awful, and I'm not going to tell you. You probably guess the venue that we're in. But there we are. This is Dave. Bye. <laughs> Toastmaster. Very welcome Toastmasters and very welcome guest. The hot tip. 
What I'm about to say would be said with humor and should be listened to with a smile. Why is that so important? Because nowadays you simply have to say it. In the old days when we started in emails all those years ago, we started with people like trolls, they called themselves. And the idea was that they questioned everything that you wrote. I was one of the first sufferers, and Paul Daniels was one of the first sufferers. And we devised a strategy, and we put on the top of each email, which you'll see in any email you get from me, this email is written with humour and should be read with a smile. Jeremy Kyle wrote last Sunday, the predilection of the British people for political correctness has ruined and is ruining further the sense of enjoyment in everything said, written. Cameron, Nigel Farage, Tim Hunt, Nobel Peace Prize winner, forced to resign his post at University College over a jocular remark about women scientists. Hence my hot tip. The top ten countries with the best sense of humour said. And I won't tell you which one was the top of the top ten countries with the best sense of humour. The Irish are jovial and enjoy telling witty stories. They also engage happily with strangers by using humour as an icebreaker. This puts them well ahead of the English who are, this is not my words, who are cold and only start expressing their humour if they know you really well. Go to any place where people meet and you will hear the Irish chortling. In England you hardly ever hear people joking or laughing, only when they are at home. English humour relies very heavily on belittling others. If you want fun, go to Ireland. So, what I'm about to say is said with humour and should be listened to with a smile. You will be listened to with a smile. Madam Toastmaster. In, in all the newspapers and everything, I reckon that this year it's going to be fantastic for all the holiday destinations in England and Wales and Scotland. <clears throat> Everybody will be staying at home. So, um, in, well, when I say at home, I mean <laughs> to be staying in Great Britain uh, because they won't be able to go anywhere else. So, so I'll tell you what, Catherine, Catherine Coates, unmute yourself. What would be your favourite destination as soon as this COVID thing all finishes? Catherine? The Isle of Wight. <laughs> <laughs> I went there a few years ago. Um, but it was when it was blowing a gale, 108 miles an hour. So me and someone else were standing above the needles. Fortunately, the wind was um, taking us backwards, not over the cliff. So I've never really seen the needles properly. <laughs> ah, that's lovely, Catherine. Thanks yeah. very much. You can unmute yourself again. And Joy, Joy Henderson, what do you think would be your favourite destination once we can get permission to go overseas? Joy, what do you think? Um, I love America. Anywhere in America. Um, I love Vegas, Florida. Um, well, now I'm at the age I'm going to stop in Great Britain. Unless I go on a cruise. <laughs> Oh, lovely. Mike, Mike Alderman, what do you think? Unmute yourself there, Mike, and tell us what would be your favourite destination once this COVID thing is over. Uh, good afternoon to you all. Um, I, I live in Jersey, so I think I'd stay here. <laughs> it's a great oh, place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jersey is a great place. It's a really nice place to be uh, in lockdown, if you like. Yes, yeah, lovely. Look. So, Con, Con, uh, Mike, you can mute yourself again now, please. Makes it good for everybody else. And Con, what do you think? What do you think? Well, having travelled around the world oh, 13 or 14 times, I don't think I want to go anywhere. I'm quite happy staying at home. Because uh, there's lots to do here. And uh, as long as we get a bit of sunshine this, this summer, uh, we should be just, just stay at home. That's me, fixed.
imagine. But my favourite place, of course, everybody knows it is Spain, the Costa del Sol. Love it to death. Love it to death. Miss it madly. Miss it madly. And Sandy misses it as well. So there we are. So, Con, do you, do you tell them about the birthdays coming up? Oh, I've, I've got two coming up, actually, because uh, my son, Michael, it's his birthday on Thursday. Ah. So, Michael and me, well, well, <clears throat> he's getting on a bit in age, same as myself. <laughs> and uh, then my daughter-in-law, Rebecca, who was married to Greg, it's her birthday on Tuesday. So, looking forward to that. My, Michael's on Wednesday and she's on Tuesday. So, we've got to... The trouble is trying to get out to buy presents for them or whatever, you know. Happy birthday to you, Rebecca. Happy birthday to you, Rebecca. Happy birthday, dear Rebecca. Happy birthday to you. And, and many more. I've got... And now, make some noise, Rebecca. Make some noise and you can... So who's going to be the phantom blower? Lynn, yeah. unmute yourself and you can blow. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, it, was, it was a little delayed, ladies and gentlemen, because of the delay going up to the satellite and coming back down again. That's lovely. And who else con did we have? Michael. Michael, Michael you're Michael. Wednesday. You. It's on Wednesday, is it? Happy birthday to you, Michael. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Michael. Happy birthday to you. And, and, many more. and I've just rushed down to Waitrose and bought another cake. Oh, wow. <laughs> and if you believe that, you believe anything. So is Michael there, Con? So, Con, you make a noise and shout one, two, three. One, two, three. <sighs> Is it worse? That was perfect, Con. I don't know how you did that. That was, that was fantastic. It's, it's Emma's birthday today as well. It's Emma? Of course it is. It's Emma Klosky's birthday as well. Can you light it up again? Oh, jeez. <laughs> I won't tell you what Sandy said. I won't tell you. But she's now she's like no way. So it's Emma's birthday and Emma Emma I'm sure would be watching this. She'd be watching this I don't think. She'd be watching this on replay she's again. Out for walk. So this is my daughter in law, my son's husband. Okay. Happy son's birthday. Wife. Sorry? Not husband, oh, so wife. I, yeah, I made that mistake. I was being overly politically correct. It's Alan's birthday on Monday. Oh, is it? Happy birthday to you, Alan. Happy birthday to you, Alan. Happy birthday, dear Alan. Happy birthday to you. Now, Alan, you can blow out the candle. Where's Alan? Where's Alan? Come on the screen, Alan. Okay, now, do you have to go say something? Okay, well, many thanks to the, the, yeah, the wishes. Already? One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> there was a delay again, a delay, Alan, because there's a huge delay because you're about a mile down the road from me in Eastbourne. Uh, so, uh, I hate to tell you, there's another one. No, Sandy. I'm not doing another She's one. Not, she won't do another one. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, please, all, all together now, please, Sandy, light the candles. Please, Sandy, light the candles. That's the last one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is the last one. This is for Emma, isn't it? This yep. is for Emma, and she'll be watching on. So who's going to do this? Oh, I think Sandy, you'd no. better do this. No. no, you have to blow them. You've got to blow yes. them. Right. Right. Happy birthday to you, Emma. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you, Emma. Emma. Birthday, dear Emma. Happy birthday to you and Bye. Many and many more. Oh, look. We saw you, Sandy. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> it's, uh, actually, we, we had great fun doing this. It's called Wild Rover. And we actually oh, wait. recorded it in one of my favourite pubs in Dublin, uh, called the Black Lion. The Ninja Corps, just down the road from where I used to live in Dublin. 
hairstyle in Japan. And it's a very, very friendly poem. There's no singing allowed in Persian. Because I haven't got, a, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got an MS and D, what's called an MS and D, like MS&D. music singing and dancing. Okay. So, so what are we going to do, Con? Uh, we'll try. You can sing along with this. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, this is something that I think that's going to be fun. We can sit here and sing along with this. <laughs> One, two, three, one. And it's no nay, never. No nay, never, no more. Will I play the wild rover? No, never, no more. I've been a wild rover for many a year. A year. And I spent all my money on whiskey and beer. And now I'm returning I'm with returning. gold in great store in And great I store. never will play the Wild Rover no, no more And it's no, nay, never No, nay, never, no more Will I play the Wild Rover No, never, no more I went into a nail house I used to frequent Frequent. And I told the landlady me money was spent It's all spent I asked her for credit, she answered me nay Nay, nay, nay For it's custom like yours I could have every, every day. day And it's no, nay, never No, nay, never, no more Will I play the Wild Rover No, never no more I'll go home to me parents Confess what I've done What's he done? And I'll ask them to pardon Their prodigal son He's a prodigal son And when they've caressed me As often before Caress me I never will play The Wild Rover no more And it's no Nay Never No nay never No more Will I play the Wild Rover? No, never, no more. Will I play the Wild Rover? No, never, no more. The Wild Rover. How? Oh wait now! I want to see the applause, please. Here we are. Here we are. Wait now. Gallery view. Gallery view. Gallery view. Oh look at that applause! Look at that applause! That's amazing! That's amazing! The fields of Athen Rye, which we love singing on stage, and the story behind the fields of Athen Rye is um, during the famine time, bad times in Ireland, where they reckon it was the worst man-made famine in the world. It wasn't the worst con, it was the only, the only man-made famine in the world, ever in history. And uh, anyway, there, there was loads of corn and stuff being imported into Ireland from uh, America. And uh, the chap in charge of all the all this stuff was a guy called Trevelyan. And there was this young lad in Dublin and his family was, was starving. And he went along and he pinched a little bit of corn from, from the warehouse. And they caught him and they tried him and they sent him off to Australia as punishment for trying to feed his family. And uh, that's just more or less the story of, uh, of this song, Fields of Athen Rye. This one is on the album. I think it's the most beautiful Irish song ever written. It's so lonely round the fields of Athenry. Island, 
prison wall I heard a younger Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Penny, I didn't ask you to unmute yourself, <laughs> but seeing that you unmuted yourself, Penny, what did you think of that? I said, brilliant. Oh, thank you. 
Is that, uh, th that's the only professional opinion you've got? <laughs> it, was just, it was just absolutely gorgeous. And I, I, my favourite way of hearing you two singing. I oh, love it, and that's uh, that's uh, the reason that you are crying. With uh, crying is that you're a music lover. <laughs> mute yourself, Penny. Mute yourself, for goodness' sake. <laughs> so, Con, shall we get on as quick as we can because we're going way over time? Con, tell us about what we're going to do next. Right. Well, we had a lot of requests for this next one, and it's. Uh... <clears throat> Again, one of my favourite songs. I've got lots of favourite songs. It was um, originally sung by this chap here, David Cassidy. And the song is, I write the songs. And uh, the word Barry Manlow took, took the song and we changed a few of the words. And this, this is one, this is the original thing we sang off. You can see lots of notes on it there. The thing is written. <clears throat> that that's the type of thing we do when we're recording. Make your own notes on, on the music. Yeah. Sing louder or sing softer or unisons or or, or, or sing sing in tune is a good one, Con. <laughs> in, sing in time and sing in tune. That's what I have to tell Con all the time. But I don't have to tell him that much, I can tell you that. My brother is probably the most accurate singer, and I tell him that all the time. And I tell John Leyland that all the time. I've never worked with anybody more accurate than Con. Let's go to my father. You know. Really? Go on. Well, when, when Bing Crosby came on the scene years and years ago, my father used to hate him because he didn't hit the note. He said, why can't he hit the note? You know, Bing, Bing. Everything was slurring up to the note or slurring down to the note. And with that in mind, it's always stuck in the back of my head. Always hit the note, hit the note bang on. Well, you're going to hit these notes perfectly, Con. So let's just yeah. listen to this.
like that. Now let me go on to speaker view, gallery view. Look at that standing ovation. That's unbelievable. Penny, I hope Alan is clapping, is he? He is clapping. He is clapping. That's good. That's lovely. Thank you very much, everybody. That's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to say it's better than money, but mm, comes a, comes a close second. <laughs> but that was good, God. So listen, we better wrap up because it's now it's twenty five past three, and we were supposed to be wrapped up at three o'clock. But Con, would you like to tell everybody what's going to happen next week? Well, uh, tomorrow, by tomorrow, <laughs> hopefully. You'll have the replay done and it'll be on YouTube. So um, look forward to seeing that and hearing, getting all the, t the music along with the video. So <clears throat> that, should, that should be good. And uh, then we've got some requests for some songs next week. We're going to have a go at the Unicorn, which is uh, a lot of people's favorite songs. And my son Philip has asked me if we could do another Barry Malnow song, uh, which he made famous <clears throat> even now. Even now. Because uh, I always remember him as a baby. Even now, even now, even now. So, Con, you'll be sitting at home watching golf, won't you? Um, While I'm breaking me, I was going to say breaking my. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind, ladies and gentlemen, and Con, I absolutely adore what I do. I always say I, I don't work. I've always done every day. I do exactly what I love doing. It's always great. And uh, Carol has said, uh, Carol Furrows, I remember you singing Even Now at your shows in the 70s. Yes, it was, it was a big favourite. So we're going to resurrect that, and Con's going to send me the music, and, and I shall do all that and i'll get a, 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 we've got a new thing going now ladies and gentlemen which we will be premiering on the 7th of february i think it is the first first month first sunday of the month and we do a special long show mind you this is a long show today but we special long show and danny hudson our our fa favorite drummer and he's all the war, all over the world drumming, but at the moment he's sitting at home uh, up in Yorkshire, and he has agreed to play drums with us from Yorkshire. So that's going to be a first for me. Uh, so the technology of getting all of that together, Con, you can imagine, can't you? Tell us about Danny. It's going to be great fun. Dan, Dan is a lovely lad. <clears throat> he's been with us now for quite a few years. And the, the lovely thing about Danny is we, we book him to do shows and if something happens that he can't do it, he always makes sure we have a very, very good dep, dep what he calls deputy drummer. <clears throat> and uh, over the years, he's, he's been fantastic. But uh, meanwhile, I'm going to have a look at my old black book here <laughs> at all the different songs we've, and hopefully find the music for even now. Um, An interesting fact we've, uh... We've now recorded a count of 658 songs. Wow. Ah, we've recorded them. I mean, that's crazy stuff, isn't it? Crazy stuff. I didn't, Con, I didn't know you knew the words for all those songs. <laughs> I bet you do. I bet you do. Wow. I bet you do. But listen, uh, this is, um, we've had a, a fun day today. It's been an interesting day. I, uh, I said last week, I think I lost a half a stone with the technical problems we had this week due to Zoom. Thank you very much, Mr. Zoom, whoever you are, for giving me all this grief today. But I've lost about three quarters of a stone today. But shall I say goodbye, Con? Yeah. I'll say goodbye. And do you want to say goodbye? It's goodbye from me and Alan. And stay safe, everybody. Look after yourself. God bless. And it's no name, never, no name, never, no more, will I play the wild rover, no, never, no more. I've been a wild rover for many a year, a year. and I spent all my money on whiskey and beer.